Burgess here with Music Marketing and today we're going to be taking this sound and turning it into this. Alright, so right here at the beginning, um, I really want to do something with Harmer and Stereoizer. Uh, I feel like there's some interesting potential here uh, in the way of phasing, in the way stereo imaging is sort of perceived. And I'd like to sort of, you know, just get a little crazy with that. So we have here a, uh, a Stereoizer. The Stereoizer could be either very narrow. This focus control that sort of moves the image around in, in interesting ways. So I would like to automate these things uh, in connection with Harmer. Now Harmer has a few other options in here that I think are pretty interesting. First thing, let's turn on unison, bring the pitch variation way down. So we basically have four clones that are all very closely related. Bring the pan down so it's mostly a mono sound. Um, these voices will essentially contribute to phasing and then the phase will give us some interesting flavor controls And if we were to automate this and sort of just move it up and down, you know as we go Yeah, as you can see some cool stuff So we're gonna we're gonna do that like right off the bat distortion can sometimes wreck this if you don't do it the right way um, Let's just go for a soft distortion soft saturation and we're very, very loud. Uh, I'm not going to worry too much about levels here because it's just going to be this never ending battle of trying to balance this. But whatever, we're going to we're just going to pull it down a touch so that at least we could see it peaking. <laughs> um, let's go over to our sterilizer here. So we have a few interesting controls here. Now, I've spent a huge amount of time creating shenanigans involving these things. Um, shenanigans. This is a shenanigan. Uh, there are a bunch of sterilizers that have automation automatically applied to them uh, in an LFO. In this case, it's an LFO. And there's like feedback loops and crazy LFO stuff. And this is cool, but it's just, it's, it's really difficult to explain at the end of it. And it just kind of goes down these weird paths that weren't that great. So I'm going to start from basics and try to build on something musical and then maybe toss something a little more complicated at the end. There are a lot of experiments that went down before this. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to browse parameters. First thing is we need to get control of the width. Now the two widths have distinct difference uh, differences to how they work because one is based on a delay, which causes like some weird, um, you know, echo sort of problems that can occur. So we need to be aware of that. Um, we're also going to browse parameters and look for the width here. So now we have the two widths, and I think it would be cool to have one width be very narrow at the beginning. So uh, we'll have both the widths actually. So this was totally narrow. And then this, I think having a jump, jumping around is sort of the play. Um, that way you get this vibe as the phase is changing. It's really interesting how the phase is interacted because even though it's a straight line, it gives like these jumping movements. And I think altering the stereo image with that will work except for on this note. That note has a bend. So I think bending it will be the right move there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and sort of mirror this, I think. We'll bend up to the top and then we'll jump back down to the middle. Yeah, and then I think we could vary this, but let's let's take the same shape idea and go here. Now for this one, let's have the width uh, for the ITD just jump in groups according to uh, the phrase. And this one will actually start out high and go low. And then we'll jump back to that middle just like the top did. And we're gonna treat these sort of as patterns. So if I wanna vary something, I might automate the automation um, just to keep it a little more modular to work with. Otherwise, you're making micro adjustments to every single one, and that can get complicated. So we can sort of have different patterns going. Okay, 
so they're both very wide and I'm gonna kind of run with this because when they're very wide, it gives a little more control to this focus. So you have focus upper and focus lower and then uh, I'm touching the band. I don't wanna touch that. So these things. So we need to automate these individually. And I also found out that if you try to modulate this at a, at a regular rate, it does not like that. <laughs> You'll get some weird noises out. That, are, that is an unhappy plugin is what it is. So uh, this is the um, IID focus upper and focus lower, as we can see down here. Um, does the ITD have these as well? I don't think it does. I think it's just an IID thing. The ITD has an algorithm that we could mess with. Let's just go with these two. So I'm gonna put upper first and then lower because that just visually will make more sense. Okay, so if we want these to be very narrow, I'd like to hit regions. You know, we might hook this up with a math formula. Let's stay away from math formulas. There's a thing you could write that would shift it. We could shift both of them around at the same using a little formula, uh, but I am gonna stay away from that for now. I think just manually moving them and I don't think it'll let you cross them. Like if we, if we try to do something like this where this is high and this is low, it just apparently just goes low or high. It picks one, it doesn't pick both. So we're gonna keep our lower moving up and then our higher moving down. So we'll have this narrow region. And I think we have to stay within certain boundaries in order to keep a, a rain active so it'll shrink down like that perfect so you see how it gets bigger and smaller let's just hear that wow that's actually pretty dope uh and then we'll come back we'll come back and in fact let's just leave one static and maybe do a jump oops right here then we'll do a jump down and we'll have this jump down and we'll have it bend down while this jumps to the very bottom. Or I think that would be kind of cool to move the focus down. I don't know. It, it tends to actually think I sound a bit better in the middle, so I don't know. Let's see. Oh, and you know what? Let's um, capitalize on this going down too, because when it's so wide, it's not as cool. And maybe we move this up. Okay, so this is cool. Now we have a lot of sustain happening right now, uh, which is nice. I think it'd be cool to vary the sustain. Um, various ways you could do this, you know, with envelopes. I'm gonna use the pluck control because it is extremely convenient. Um, so if we... I think that provides a nice way of sort of dealing with this. Um, the sterilizer stuff I would like to keep together. So I'm gonna move this all down just so that the harmer stuff is all next to each other. Automate this and it'll just take the next available slot for it. Um, so we need to sort of pick how we want this to go. Um, I think moderate plucks at the beginning are cool. Um, and then on some of the notes, I think we could have them ring out by bringing the pluck up and then bringing it back down abruptly. So maybe we have the pluck get more intense here and then this rings out here. And maybe on this note here, we have a bit more of a pluck. And then the bomb, bomb, bomb. I think we could have this short, long, long thing going on. And now this isn't a filter. So uh, this long note, we might want to treat separately. I kind of wanted to have sustain though. So we get that bend in there. Um, and then maybe we shorten it down as we go. And since the phrase repeats, we don't have to like remake this every single time. Uh, we might, oh, we might do something more interesting with this too. I don't know. Uh, yeah, let's do something a bit cooler here. So just keep in mind, this is going to change this over here, but that's, I, I kind of, I want that behavior. So, um, we're going to bring this up. Otherwise you could just make it unique and it would solve it. So we have this done, done, done. So I, we, it's probably a good idea to repeat whatever we do. 
uh, just for the sake of, you know, keeping things simple. And then maybe, dun, 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 could have this transition down, maybe rather sharp. And then what we could do is let's take this whole thing. Let's do it. Let's let's just make a little like intro loop, just a good a good loop. And I am going to move these down one more. And I'm going to merge these by hitting Control G. And do do do. do I have control points. Perform a lossy merge. Sure. Um, did it? Is it is it thinking? Oh, sensitivity. Oh, look at all these crazy amounts of control points. I've actually not used it without the control point thing. Let's just do that. Yeah, it's close enough. And um, let's take this and automate the max to be very low at the beginning. So it's it's plucky and it opens up over time. Or the min. No, 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 no. Let's, let's look at it from the bottom. So we want to take the small points and bring them up so that the average sustain rises over the sound. So I'm gonna go ahead and automate this. We're gonna bring it up. Now at the beginning, let's just leave it alone and then we'll have it sort of do this transition on the second one. Now, I didn't hear the pluck rising very much. Oh, yeah, it is rising. It's rising. Okay. Um, now, what I want to do here is, yeah, I'm not totally sold on what just happened. Let me undo. I, I feel like it would sound more, more. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so we're back to here. And let's automate the min on this. And since these are all the same thing, it should still work, I imagine. Let's hear the ending. <laughs> I mean, I saw the knob moving. I'm just shocked it doesn't sound. I'm shocked it just doesn't sound more, you know? It's kind of interesting to me. Okay, so uh, with that out of the way, uh, let's let's add on a verb, a small one. Bring a filter in some. And then I also want to just quickly experiment with some different notes. And then I'm going to grab a kick drum and just sort of, you know, sell this to myself a little bit. Let's see how this sounds with a four to the floor kick on it. So I'm just going to come in here, go to kicks. I got a, a ton of kicks in here. Um, let's just find a, I don't know, a kick from somewhere. We'll go for clean. Why not? Is that the kick I want? I feel like I could spend forever picking the kick, so let's not be too picky with it. And this is where we do have to look at levels a little more. Okay, so now we can begin to look at sort of like macro sound events um, or macro, micro. I'm not sure. If I would, I'm not sure which one it would really be, but basically, we have this cool sound. Um, one of the, the core mechanic of our sound is this pitch being very low. As soon as this gets big, the phase loses its value. Um, and we do not get as much variation throughout because the phase just becomes less important because there's a bigger pitch difference between them. The, the phase is important in this case because all the, the waveforms are very similar. So small phase variations cause static offsets that just appear throughout the whole wave. So if we move this around, this will get interesting. Um, and if we move panning around, the panning will also sort of move around in weird ways. And there's a possibility of an EQ compressor stack that could do some weird things. If we like treat an EQ like a crazy filter, and then you compress the living heck out of it, 
we could get some really cool sort of sounds that way, especially with the verb in the mix. Um, so let's go ahead and first just automate the pitch and let's bring everything down here. Move this, move this away. Um, this is the plug, decay length. Yeah, so this is the stuff. So let's just move all this down, including the kick. Why not? Okay, so for example, let's just say we wanted to break on the second one with some variation and maybe some subtle changes here. This will impact how effective this is. So below this line, we'll get even more phasiness and above this line, we'll get even less phasey. So we're gonna go here and then maybe on the second one, we do a little snap down and then we merge up. And then let's start to uh, decay away from it. Here's an idea and then snap back. This is a lot. I'm just kind of, I just want to hear what it sounds like at a higher value. Okay, so this works here at the very end, I think very high. And then right here, maybe do a little bit of a jump instead. And then on the second one, I think we should bring it back down. And this is where, um, let's merge. Do I want to merge the MIDI yet? Let's just make this a unique pattern. I don't think merging the MIDI is a good idea. Here, I think maybe a high note or a low note. Maybe down. Okay, um, I'm not totally sold on this. I think the A is okay, but let's take this and give it a different phase. And what else is causing this? Oh, the pluck decay length. I feel like on this one, the pluck decay length needs to be different to sell this note. Right there, there it is. Okay, so the way we're, what we're doing right now is first the sustain needs to be longer. Uh, we've got the value for the, where is it at? I mean, you saw me make the thing in front of you. Um, the unison pitch thickness, but it jumps down at this note. So this is low, so the phase will have a difference. So because this is low, uh, this will, the phase will have a big effect and that's, that's why I made these decisions. But hopefully you follow all that so you could make your own. Okay, so the other area we could sort of vary things at is the panning. So the panning will also make the phasing just less effective because all the waveforms aren't straight down the middle. So phase differences in a, a stereo field just don't work as, as good. But we are doing things um, with the, you might think, but we're doing things with stereoizer afterwards, but that's after this process has already taken place. So those differences are already present and then we spread those out where this is at the root of what we're doing. And if we move this, it'll also change it quite a bit. So for example, if we had like the panning difference very high, it's not as pronounced. Now it's, it's less important. The phase differences still exist. And it, I think it also just keeps the voices panned in the same spot. So those differences are essentially distributed through the stereo field now instead. Um, so if we take this and I think just pick different regions, it's kind of like we're picking a resolution almost of what's happening. So let's do that and bring this up. Okay, and then finally on the output, let's toss on, um, this one's a free one, an OTT. Let's grab an EQ before, 
And let's take, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a series of just different valleys and peaks, and we're gonna move all this around. So this is gonna look really dang crazy, uh, but this is all essentially one idea, and let's put it after, excuse me, uh, after the drum, or before, before the drum. Uh, we just need to move these different peaks, and we can adjust them later, but let's just get these rocking and rolling. So that's what we're gonna do here. So we're gonna move two, three, four, five, and six. And this right here is just gonna be sort of random for now. Um, let's, let's just see if we can cook up some interesting spots. Now, any of these sort of sharper cuts, those should probably line up with the tune. Uh, so that was just me clicking in sort of a weird spot, but um, let's just see what these things are. I feel like we could go a lot faster. I'm feeling faster. It's actually a lot, it's actually pretty cool. So we're just adding like movement around in the sound. Um, we could in fact make maybe make this like more extreme and maybe make this like less gentle of a cut, maybe move five down, maybe make it a little more. And then you could also, each one of these could have an accompanying level control as well, which could reduce the effect. And you could sort of go after specific resonances, a uh, vowel filter is another option, or a filter with just a high Q. I, I tend to like using an EQ for this because it just gives you so much more control over how things are shaped. And then at the end, we're just pulling everything up. And if you want, you could toss a filter in um, a low, a low pass filter. So we could bring this down and up, maybe just a cut. But this is, this is a, uh, yeah, 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 this is a low, low cut or not a low cut, a low pass, a high cut. Um, and then this isn't the most pronounced. So maybe we make this an official, um, low pass here and we give it a higher order. Like let's say steep six. But I kind of like I kind of like where it's sitting right there, um, and then you know away we go. We might grab some like some hats or something. Let's go for some high hats. And for now, I'll just toss this on the same pattern as the drums, and we'll do this like three thing. <laughs> We'll, okay, we'll do the 16, but we'll uh, do one of these on here. And here we can begin to mess with different patterns. So like, let's say uh, we keep one pattern the same. Let's make this one just a different note. Whoops. And away you go. At this point, we would start adding in additional sounds, layers, coming up with better themes. Uh, but the general sound design portion of this is done. We have a lot of options for varying the sound, creating different filtered effects. Um, and then, of course, I, I'm not sold on this kick, or at least the way it's currently been done. Um, the kick, I actually sample is somewhat fine. I just need to, like, you know, treat it. Uh, but anyways, hopefully this gives you some ideas. You can use Stereoizer in a way maybe you haven't done before. And also just some ideas from a sound design perspective uh, with Harmer. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos. And have a blessed day.